babes welcome back to my channel and to this video that's going to be a get ready with me but it's not going to be, you can see I already have my foundation and my eyebrows on and concealer that's all I have on because I wanted to use I'm honestly not that prepared as, as I wish I was the two new palettes by Ofra can you see anything these are really white <laughs> And these are the Ofra and Francesca Tolot uh, collaboration. These were sent to me by Ofra Nordics, which is like Ofra here in Sweden. And I also got the three lippies. And I thought that we'd just play a bit with these palettes. They came in this beautiful box, like you slide it open. And then the palette was like in here, in this compartment. Very, very cute. Uh, so thank you so much Ofra for sending these my way. I am so excited to be playing with these. And I thought, wait, let me put this on the floor. Ugh. <clears throat> I thought I'd play a bit with these palettes and not really like this is what the eyeshadow palette looks like I just play a bit with it and not like really talk about it Well, I'll, I'll put in some comments here this one I'm the most excited about this one the face palette like look at this it's like glowy blushes and I'm all about that Maybe I should bring out a highlighter because I don't know if this is gonna be like Enough. I'm using the word enough very loosely here, uh, but it's basically two bronzers and two glowy blushes And I think the bronzer I'm gonna use is the one that's called bisque here uh, which seems to be slightly lighter than the other one because I am even though I have some self tanner on right now I'm definitely not like I would say I'm a, like a light medium when I have my self tanner on uh, Otherwise, I am definitely a light Maybe I can get away with some of that red when I have more tan in the summer That's not what we were going to talk about today. Today. We are going to talk about money um, And not like YouTube money Because I don't want to if you ever wondering Ooh. If you're ever wondering why YouTubers are not like mentioning the exact number, that is stunning. The exact number that they are making on like AdSense and stuff, it's because you sign a contract when you, with YouTube um, when you start AdSense. It's not, is it with Google? You sign a contract with Google, like you accept the terms basically. And the terms say that you are not allowed to say any specifics about your um, money. Otherwise, you might lose your... It might break the, like, what's it called? Vilkor, the terms. You break the terms on which you have agreed on. So, uh, and that's basically because all YouTubers have a different CPM, which is like how much you get per a thousand views or whatever it is. Obviously, I'm not that well read into this. So if you're ever wondering why not a lot of YouTubers, if any, are talking about the exact number, it's because we are not allowed according to the contract. I can, like, people can tell you, like, somewhat like in the neighborhood but we're actually not really allowed to show some of the numbers and if you have seen people still show them uh, that's up to them i i will personally say that i don't want to like risk the contract that i have with like google by showing you that um but i can't say that i'm making less on youtube than i am on my normal job for sure so that's not really what I want to talk about. I want to talk about because in Sweden we are in the middle of tax season so I thought we'd be adulting a bit today and talk about like salary and taxes and paying your bills and stuff like that. Well, if you already think that this is boring, I'll, I'll, I'll try and make it juicy. <laughs> and I'm guessing that most countries are like in tax season right now because it's like 2018 has been finished and most companies have made their close their books for last year. Um, I guess that's what it's called. I do have I do have a company, but I have I don't know I have companies work in other countries, but I have a company in my name, which basically means that any money that comes into the company is seen as my personal money and any expenses that the company has is seen as my personal expenses. So if I would to get more expenses on my company than I would be able to pay, I would personally go bankrupt. And this could be risky, uh, but running a YouTube channel, because I want to pay my taxes, that's why I started a company. Running a YouTube channel is not really, it's not really any costs. It's the costs I choose to get for myself. So if I, like... The only costs I have are my accountant, because I have an accountant, because I don't know anything about taxes and, and stuff like that. So I have an accountant to make everything right, so she like fixes the taxes and, and stuff like that. And of course, buying makeup. And the dog is sleeping on the sofa again. So, I mean, if I'm stupid and buying makeup for more money than I am bringing into the company, of course, I'm going to be personally responsible for the debt. But... Most people that do a company, 
set up a separate account where you just like hire yourself uh, so that you are not personally responsible if something goes wrong in the company and you don't have to go personally bankrupt because I mean it's a bit of a risk it is and I've seen some people like now the tax season comes along because since I have a in Sweden we call it um, Inskild Firma personal company um, I don't know what I'm bring on anyways um, when tax season comes along, I'll do my taxes for me and my company together. So it's not like two separate things. And I've seen some people from the US complain when they got their taxes now for their company saying that like they have to pay so much more taxes. And before I didn't really get that. And before when I saw that, I was like, oh, that must really suck to like the end of the year have to like pay another like bulk sum of money but now that I have a company I, I'm bronzing to the gods here but I have do have a bit of a tan should we try a bit of the other one I'll try a bit of the darker one and just see what kind of tone it is it's it's darker and more reddish that's kind of pretty uh, but now that I have a company I realize that at least her, this is how it works in Sweden and I don't know how it works in other countries I really don't uh, but when you start a company, or when you have a company, every year the Swedish Skatverket, the place in the Swedish state that handles taxes, like our like IRS, let's just call it IRS for like simplicity, they will ask you, okay, so how much money do you think you're going to make in 2019? Uh, or 2018, because that was the year before. And you're gonna have to say, you know what, I think I'm gonna make this much money. I'm using the orangey blush. And if you are wrong, and and then you get to pay taxes based on that amount. So let's say in Sweden you pay 51% in taxes when you have a a Inkrid firma, like a personal business. So I pay 51% in taxes on everything that comes into um, my company. So let's say I say, okay, I think I'm gonna make a hundred dollars a month. Let's say I say that, then I have to pay $51 a month in taxes. And then it ends up that I'm actually making $200 a month, which is a good thing because your company is going better than you thought it was. But it also means that you owe, like, you owe the state a bit more taxes. So either you fix this throughout the year, or you just save the money and you fix it when the taxes are set to be due. Like, in Sweden we call it declaration, basically where you set the taxes. This blush is like the prettiest thing I've ever had on my face and I am I am blown away by how pigmented and beautiful this is. Sorry about the sirens in the background, but like I've said before, I live very close to the hospital because my fiance works at the hospital, so uh, he wanted to have a close like walking distance to work. And it's actually Sunday today and he is at work, so I'm I'm taking care of the pets by myself. <laughs> which is not really hard because they're just sleeping. Well, this is so pretty, I should not be putting more on. Um, so let's say that I made $200 a month instead. And, I was, and that is a good thing because then I'd be making more money than I thought I'd be making, but I still have to have in the back of my head, like this isn't a surprise. The, the government is gonna look at that at the end of 2018 and they're gonna be like, hey, you only paid $51 a month, but actually you should have paid $102 a month. So we <laughs> would like to have that extra money, please. And this is what happens when companies get asked for more tax after a year. So if you're ever wondering when a company is, somebody is owning a company and they're complaining that they have to pay more taxes, it's only because they made more money than they thought they would and the state is just asking for more taxes. And if you already spent that money on something else, that means that you owning the company, you kind of didn't know what you were doing because you should have saved that money for taxes. Um, and my, I, oh, wait, let me get in highlighter and we can talk a bit about how like salaries and like taxes every month work here in Sweden because I'd love to hear more about how this works in your country because I'm always so interested in like the different, differentialities, is that a word? <laughs> and how it works in different countries. But let me get in highlight. I'm gonna get an Ofra one so we can put this over. Okay, <laughs> cat hair. I got the Bali one. This is Ofra Bali. This is in the old packaging. This is the one I wear when I have a bit of a tan. It's got this beautiful, almost peachy gold it's a bit darker but it's super beautiful i love this one i have a bit of a tan like i said so in sweden like i i have a company but i still work in a normal job because that's how i get the bulk of my money like 
I get more money from my normal job than I get from YouTube because I don't have a really big YouTube channel. But when you get your paycheck in Sweden, the taxes have already been deducted by uh, your employer. Uh, and you get your paycheck once a month in Sweden. And I know that, for example, in US, it's very common to get it once every two weeks. That is not how it works in Sweden. In Sweden, you get it once a month. And most people in Sweden, I would say like, maybe 75% of people in Sweden do get paid uh, on the 25th in Sweden. That's like payday. <laughs> oh, I had some texture here that I maybe should not have been highlighting, but YOLO. Ugh, why are you using that? Leave it to the kids. Okay, I'm gonna use a bit of the eyeshadow. I don't really know what I'm gonna use. Let me think about that while we discuss the salaries. So I get my paycheck from my employer once a month and they have already taken the tax away. The tax in Sweden depends on what like city you live in because you, you pay your main taxes to your municipality and your municipality, depending on how rich it is and how many overhead costs they have, they will have a different, like a different tax rate depending on where you live. For example, I live in Linköping. Linköping has one of the lowest taxes actually in Sweden. And I think I don't even, even in Sweden taxes are pretty high. I don't think I even pay 30% in taxes on my salary. And then of course, on the money that I make in my company, I pay 51%. Um, and then you pay a little, little to the region and the regions are the ones that um, are in charge of hospitals in Sweden. And then if you make enough money in Sweden, I think if it's, if you make I think it's like over 36,000 a month um, you pay a little tax to the state as well it's basically like if you're that rich if you make that much money you can contribute a bit to the state as well and I feel that's pretty fair to be honest I am pro taxes so I don't mind this and also they take out some money for uh, your future funeral costs and that might seem a bit morbid but basically it's like no matter how poor you are or no matter how poor your family is is if you die there's gonna be a place for you in the ground, basically. So you're not like, it's not a panic. <laughs> so you, they take a little amount of money to your, to have somewhere to put you if, if when you die. It's, it's not an if you die, it's, it's a when you die, for sure. And then also they take some money out for uh, the church. And not everyone in Sweden is, I'm trying to find the brush. Not everyone in Sweden is a member of the church because the church and the state in Sweden are not connected. They are not one and the same. Uh, and I know that that might sound very weird for a lot of countries, but Sweden is actually one of the most, I'm, I'm picking the pink, one of the most secularized, if not the most secularized country in the world, meaning that not a lot of people are religious in Sweden. Uh, and you can pay money to the church, uh, but you can also I'm trying to put my mirror up a bit. You can also choose to not pay any money to the church and actually go out of the church and none of your tax money uh, is gonna go to the church. Uh, I don't attend church and I am not religious, but I'm still part of the church because I don't mind some of my money, some of my salary, going to the church, helping people to actually get comfort from the church, being able to go there because I realized that if everybody stopped paying taxes to the church, uh, maybe they wouldn't be able to keep doing what they do and I I do even though I do not feel any benefit from the church I realize that there are others who do and I want to I want to help that that's that's how I am as a person I don't mind paying a lot of taxes I don't mind any of that because if, if me paying a lot of taxes helps people that for some reason can't afford these things on their own I, I love to help so that's basically how tax works. And normally your employer is very good at knowing how much tax you're supposed to pay. So if you do not deduct anything yourself when you get your tax papers in the beginning of the next year, normally most people only get some dollars back or some are, are like, owe the, the government some dollars because normally your employer knows how much tax to deduct. But it's the same here. It's not your employer's really responsibility to take out the right amount of tax on your salary. It's up to you because every every month, at least here in Sweden, when you get your salary, you get some kind of document, either electronically or in the mail, saying how much salary you're getting and how much money has gone to these different places that I said. The church, uh, your funeral cost, taxes to every other place and stuff like that. You basically get a receipt. This is your paycheck and this is what we've done with 
the percentage of it. Uh, also, people, um, also some money go to the pension, of course. And if you see that things aren't added up, like if things don't add up and it looks weird, it's up to you to talk to your employer and say, you know what? I don't think that I am paying enough taxes or I think that I am paying too much taxes. And I see some people sometimes get really annoyed with their employers uh, that they are have been put them in the wrong tax bracket, for example. And it's not up to them. It's, it's up to you. You have to be in charge of your own economy and know like how much money you're getting in and how much money you should be ta paying in taxes and stuff like that. And I know that sometimes it's a really tough pill to swallow and it's really hard to be adulting at times, but that's just how it is. This end of the year, when I got my tax papers, I owed the state a lot of money. A lot of money. And basically it's because the amount of money that I said that, that I was going to make this year was uh, lower than what I actually made. But here's the thing. I knew this. I have noticed this throughout the whole year that, you know what? I used the purple now so you can see. This doesn't add up. I know that I am going to owe the state money. So I saved the money. So when I got the bill from the state saying, you owe us a lot of money, and I owe them, I owe them some money. That was the biggest bill I've ever paid in my life. I had all that money and I just paid it. So when people are saying, oh my God, I got so much, got such a big like tax to pay. Um, in Sweden we call it rest scat, like tax left left tax. <laughs> That's basically what we call it in Sweden. And they don't have that money. It basically means that they have spent money that they should have known wasn't theirs. Because you know. I mean, you have already told the IRS, this is how much money I'm making. And if you notice every month, it's not that. Well, maybe you should have thought about that. I feel like money overall, sometimes people, God, this is beautiful. <laughs> Sometimes people don't want to be like, it's always somebody else's fault. And I've been, I've been that person as well. I've been the person where, why don't people just fix this for me? But if it's something I've learned with age, it's that it's better to just do it yourself. Because you know your own economy and you know how much taxes you should be paying. And if you don't, maybe this is the time to find out. Because who wants to get an unexpected, like, big bill to pay in the beginning of a new year? When you think you're doing so good, I mean, that must be devastating. It's better to know in advance, like, know, know your economy, know how much money you're getting, you should be getting in. And if you're getting more than that, that is not like an unexpected gift. That is probably money that you shouldn't be having. That's how you should see it. Make sure that that is not money that you're going to owe someone in a while. Um, wow, this is, this is incredibly pretty. I also wanted to talk a bit about like this whole, because there's been so much talk about like credit cards and like, should you get credit cards? Is it better to have things on credit and just pay it? Because the credit cards, um, like the companies, they will always say that it's so good to have a credit card. You would get so many benefits, uh, but it's only good if you can pay the entire bill every month and if you know exactly how much you have put on your credit card and you know that that amount will be no problem to pay next month. It is never a good idea to put anything on a credit card if, if paying that amount next month also means that you have to get credit that month as well. Then you're just pushing the problem to the future and it's never good to always be in debt to someone. Although I do realize that this is really hard. This is really hard and sometimes you need that extra money. I do that too. I do sometimes, um, like if I buy something and I know like I'm gonna be able to pay this off in two or three months. I'll buy it and I'll pay it off in two or three months. <laughs> the secret, I'm using this very loosely, is to not buy anything else those two or three months because then you just added more. Let's say you buy something for $300 and you know that you're going to be able to pay $100 each month for three months. That's perfect, but you won't be able to pay $300 all at once. I mean, that's, that's me too. I do that 
not, I'm not gonna say all the time, but at least like once a year at least. I do it and I buy something for $300 and I pay $100 the first month, I pay $100 the second month, and then I pay $100 the third month. The secret is to not buy anything else on the second or the third month, because let's say you buy something for $300 uh, the first month, and then you buy something else for $300 the second month, and you are thinking that you're gonna pay that off um, in like, well, three months, and then the third month you buy something more. That third month, you're paying $300. You're paying the amount that you said that you weren't able to pay that first month. And I think that that is like something with like after pay and stuff like that, with makeup, that you get something that you have to pay for three months and you're not even gonna think that that item is that exciting for three months. Before three months has passed, there is something else that you are gonna wanna have to get and the smart person in you knows that you cannot buy anything else on Afterpay before you have paid off the thing that you have right now. But the person who wants to get something fun and new might convince you to get something else on Afterpay. And all of a sudden, you're paying that cost every month that you said that you couldn't, weren't able to pay all at once. And I think that is the problem with, that is the thing that you need to be like cautious of when it comes to like uh, uh, credits and stuff is that there's nothing wrong with having a loan or two as long as you don't have in so many loans or so many credits that you end up paying a sum every month that was equivalent to the big sum that you said you couldn't pay all at once then then there's like i don't know there's no point you're just digging a grave for yourself so I, I, don't, I don't think that credit or paying something with Afterpay is a bad thing altogether. I just think that we have to analyze like how we spend and how we use it so we don't dig ourselves a hole that makes us pay more every month than we said in the beginning that we could. I'm gonna see if I can just finish this up a bit. Okay, so the shadows that I've used is the pink and then this purple that look like a satin but work beautifully in the crease as well. And I've used this marine like blue uh, in the outer corner. And now I'm gonna use this like muted lilac uh, in like the lower lower lash area, like here. That's a really pretty color, actually. I think I'm actually gonna use the same color that I have this one on my cheeks. I'm gonna use that uh, on my lid as well. I'm just gonna spray it a bit to get it to be more like an eyeshadow because highlighters are usually not that bright. I'm just trying to get some kind of a different tone in. And now I'm taking that middle shade from here and I'm putting that in my inner corners. Well, this turned into a, like a makeup tutorial, but I just wanted to talk a bit about that because I mean, I worked as a model, I worked as a waitress, and there's been plenty of times in my life where I've made very little money, and I just want you to remember that spending money that you don't have or spending money that isn't yours is never ever gonna work out. Uh, and I know I'm so like boring and adulting, and I don't know what happened here. Take this from a person that has been in the position where once the bills have been paid, once I have paid off some of my like mini loans, uh, I didn't really have much money left. I didn't have any money left uh, for the rest of the month to do anything at all really. And I just, I would hate for someone else to get in that kind of a position. Uh, I didn't, I've never had a bunch of like really high loans. Oh, I do have a student loan, even though it's, like, university in free, is free in Sweden, you are able to loan money from the state if you don't want to work at the same time as you do your studies, if you just want to like 100% uh, do your studies, and that's what I did, and I'm still paying off that loan. Um, it's not a super high cost, and it's not that bad, but right now, that is the loan that I have, uh, unless I take like some of those, like, I'll pay this in three months. Um, which I don't think is a, it's a bad thing. I'm just saying that be careful so you don't end up either spending money that you should actually give to the state in taxes and also be careful so you don't end up 
collecting a bunch of those small fees for like afterpays and credit cards and stuff. So it ends up to a sum that you actually weren't comfortable with paying all at once in the beginning because it's easy. It's easy for things to, to just get a bit like carried away. I mean, obviously I'm gonna wear this one because I'm boring, but there's also, this one could be pretty though, but I don't feel like it, I'm sorry. But the red one is not the right one. These are the three colors that were in the the set. This is Vermilion. It's a very bright, like slightly orangey red, really pretty. And um, these are the Ufra liquid lipsticks. I love the formulas. I'm super excited about this. This is Ruby. It is a beautiful, dark, dark burgundy red, super beautiful. And then it's this one. It's a pinky nude. Uh, it's a it's almost leaning a bit like a warm pinky nude. It's called Baroque. It also, if I look at it, it has some, some shimmer specks in it, but I don't think that they are meant to be visible on the lips. So I'm gonna put this on. I'm gonna do some like lashes and stuff like that. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna fix it off cam and I'll be back. I think that's everything. Am I, am I pleased with this blending? I think so. Okay, I think that is the finished look. I got the original Iconics on. I have the lipstick on. What was it called? Baroque. I don't know how to pronounce that in, in English, but that's how we would say it in Swedish. I'm gonna use a bit of the Chromographic Pencil by MAC in Marine Ultra just to bluish up the lower lash line as well. Okay, that turned out really pretty. I love the blue in the waterline. That looks really nice. I'm super happy about this look. I hope you don't think that this video came off as like judgmental or like mom Angie like telling you how you should do your economy. When I was younger, I did a lot of like really bad like economical decisions and I got myself in situations where I just couldn't really do anything for a really long amount of time and I just wish that someone would have told me like think of this because it's very easy to assume that all the money that comes into your bank account is yours but it doesn't necessarily have to be that way and it's also very easy to think that like when you're splitting something up oh like ten dollars a month that's nothing but it is nothing and yeah, you're right, it's not that much money if it's only that thing you're paying off. As soon as you start adding things and you have 10 things for $10 a month, that's that's no longer a teensy-weensy amount of money. It's, it's maybe more than you were willing to pay every month in the beginning. So I'm just... I don't know. I don't know really why I made this video. I just feel like sometimes... We get ourselves in situations where we push things to the future, hoping that they will solve themselves, but nobody else can solve them but you. And it's so much better to be proactive because nothing feels better than going to bed in the night feeling like you don't owe anyone anything. And yeah, that was uh, that was everything for this video. I Please don't be offended by this. Um, trust me, I've done my fair share of like, super big mistake so I am not here to judge you I'm just here to share my opinions on how 35 year old Angie sees this these things if you'd asked me when I was 21 this is not the kind of an answer you would have gotten from me at all but yeah that was everything for this video I hope you liked this I hope you liked the look I will say that my first impression of both of these palettes are very positive the bronzer and the highlighter looks great this is the kind of tone of bronzer I like I like something that's warmer the eyeshadow looks great and the lipstick looks amazing and I I hadn't been using like the Ofra liquid lipsticks in a bit and even though I know I love them I was almost surprised at like oh yeah they're this good <laughs> so yeah First impression, I like all of this. I thought it was really pretty. Thank you so much, Ofra, for sending this my way. If you want to shop Ofra in Europe, there is a site called Uranity that has all of Ofra's, pretty much all of Ofra's things, and you can buy them in Europe and not have to pay uh, customs and stuff. And I also have a discount code at Uranity for 15% off if you want to get a bit of a discount. And yeah, I think that was everything. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next video, which will be pretty soon, pretty soon, because I upload so many things. <laughs> Bye!